learn how to use an epoxy clay, which is a two-part air dry clay that dries in 120 minutes to be very, very hard. It's great for embedding, it's great for just using as color accent, and there's all kinds of things that you can do with this clay. So this is just covering the basics of how to mix it and how to place it with great success inside of the non-designed bezels. The techniques I'm gonna show you will help you prevent from having a lot of cleanup to do, um, just how to mix the clay, how to apply it in there to get these great results. So for this video, you will need some non-design bezels and you can use a variety of different shapes and sizes. You will also need to use some rubbing alcohol. I use this to clean the bezels prior to putting the clay in along with a, little cup, a couple of little Q-tips. You'll also want to have a little bit of baby powder to uh, put the gloves on and off easily. And then I also have some wet wipes. And then the star of the show is this product, Crystal Clay. It's a two-part epoxy clay. It comes in two different sizes. Cleaning the non-design bezels is ideal. It keeps the crystal clay nice and clean and it also keeps the resin clean and able to attach to all of the surfaces. So what you're cleaning is the oxidization and any oils that might be on the bezels. This is an example of a bezel that's already been cleaned and this is one that hasn't. So to get this look that we're getting when we um, plate the non-design products with this precious metals is this oxidization. The oxidization absorbs into the fine 24 karat gold and the 0.999 silver and copper and gives it a kind of aged look. But we definitely want to clean them prior to using them with the non-design techniques. To clean the findings, you're gonna to want to have a little bit of rubbing alcohol and some Q-tips and a couple of wet wipes. So starting with this one here, I'll go ahead and dip my Q-tip right inside of the rubbing alcohol so it's nice and wet. And then just place it down inside you can see I'm just kind of getting that whole base of the finding nice and wet with the rubbing alcohol and you can see that it comes off very easily. So I'm placing a little bit of rubbing alcohol in the base around these edges here and up here is where it tends to gather that oxidization. Then with a wet wipe, just go ahead and wipe down any of that oxidization from especially this lip area, especially when we're working with the resin because uh, we pull it over onto that lip area and down into the base of the bezel. I'm going around this side edge. And this is about as thorough as you'll need to be because if it's not lifting up now, you should be good to go. So go ahead and clean all of the various bezels that you would like to use and we will move on to the next step. Next we're going to use a little bit of this crystal clay in the black to mix it and then we're going to embedded into the various bezels. Depending on which one you purchase, you're going to want to open up the package and you will see inside of here there are some gloves. There's some packages of crystal clay, the part A and part B, and it also has a toothpick with a little applicator and this is when you want to embed crystals into the piece, so we won't be using that, so you can save that for later. Go ahead and open up your gloves. And you can open up the two packages 
of crystal clay. So part A is always going to be the color that you're working with. This one's black and part B is going to be the resin itself. When these two pieces or these two A and B are activated, that's what makes it rock hard after it's had its full time to cure. It has to be a one to one ratio. It doesn't need to be exact like resin. It can just be approximate. If you want to, you can weigh it out with a scale, but I just kind of pinch off equal size balls. I also like to work with uh, placing down onto my work surface, like a little piece of plastic so that when I get these out of the package, I have them on to a uh, surface so it doesn't stick onto my paper surface. Before I start to work with these, I'm going to go ahead and put on my gloves. To work with the gloves, I like to always have a little bit of baby powder on my hands thoroughly before I insert them in the gloves. That's what makes these gloves super easy to get on and off and I can just use these over and over again. I'm also going to want to have a couple of handy wipes uh, so that I can wipe my hands down easily after I work with the clay. I'm going to put a piece of uh, paper down onto my work surface as I get my hands nice and coated with the baby whoa, powder. Sometimes there's moisture or my hands can get sweaty while I'm in the, in the gloves, so it's nice to have them pre-done. This is what makes it easy for my hands to come in and out. Uh, between usages. Now that my clay, my hands are protected from the clay, I can go ahead and pinch off two equal size balls. This is going to be a matter of trial and error to figure out exactly the quantity that you'll need for the various bezels. But if we're doing a bezel, let's say like this, um, over time you'll figure out exactly what kind of uh, quantity you will need to do to fill this up. But my recommendation is while you're still learning and before you actually get into production that you just pinch off not enough because it's so much easier just to go back and, and create or make more clay than it is for you to have to um, hurry up and use all of the clay. So pull off about a large blueberry size ball of A and a large blueberry size ball of B. And see like how equal are those in size. And I can just see that my B is a little bit more than it needs to. So I can put back a little bit. And as you start to get more and more fluent in doing this, you can weigh it and you'll know exactly how much it takes to go inside of there. So you might mix up 20 balls worth um, and then do two, 20 pendants worth. But that's what you're going to want to do is pitch off equal size balls from part A and from part B. Then before you go any farther, you're going to want to set these aside. We're going to close these up and package them in just a little bit. Pick up your part A and part B and blend this together fully. So there's different types of gloves. These are the gloves that come inside of the package of the crystal clay. These are actually really big for my hands and so it's harder for me to mix these. So not all gloves are the same and you might want to look into getting some gloves that are a little bit better sized. I have very small hands and so these gloves are big and so it makes it a little bit more challenging to work with the clay. But it's just when the clay is in that loose form of part A and B, the B is where the epoxy is and so it's just not a good idea to touch that with your hands because you could touch it, your eyes or whatever. So I always put the gloves on or try to put the gloves on prior to working with this when it's in that raw state. And then once it's mixed together and it's activated, you can take the gloves off. All right, 
So the clay is no longer marbled. It's pretty consistent. And so I'll just go ahead and put that on your work surface. This is where I do like to use the wet wipe and rub all of that excess clay. Mostly I'm getting the colorant because um, the black, uh, you know, they have to put so much ink in there to get it that nice strong black. And that's what's coming off on my gloves mostly. It's just that ink color. So you can just wipe your gloves down with a wet wipe and so they're nice and clean. And then you just go ahead and pull on the fingers and with that baby powder underneath, it makes it really easy for these gloves to come off and not turn inside out. And then you can just reuse the gloves over and over again. When you're finished with the crystal clay, you can go ahead and close up the package and seal it as tight as you can, removing any of the excess air. The crystal clay comes in a little package like this, but when I'm restoring it, I like to put part A in one bag, closing that up and just squeezing out the air. And then the part B, I like to seal up and keep in a separate bag. And this is just to help prevent it from uh, hardening a little bit sooner than it needs to. So I keep the A inside here and then the B is completely in its own bag. So there's not any risk whatsoever of these two um, getting activated put the two in, pull out any excess air, and seal it up. Now that the clay is activated, we can start to put it into the various bezels that we want to use it in. And let me show you how to do that. Before I touch that clay too much, I still have some baby powder on my hands. So using a wet wipe, just wipe off that baby powder. If the clay is really, really sticky when you first start to work with it, you can just let it sit uh, 10 minutes and uh, with time, this will start to firm up a little bit and it won't be nearly as sticky. So it's, you can see it's not terribly sticky right now, but it is, uh, if yours was super, super wet, um, often if you're colorizing this clay with uh, like a white clay and you're adding some of the opaque pigments to it, there's other tutorials teaching you how you can colorize your own clay. You want to let it sit for, I don't know, up to 20 minutes. Sometimes it's just oversaturated with the colorants and as it sets up, it's much easier to work with. So I'm going to start with uh, filling this bezel first. I'm going to have some fresh wet wipes ready for me to go because um, I'm going to want to mix the clay into a nice round ball and then place it into the bezel. So I'm looking for a nice round ball without a lot of creases in it. And let's start with this bezel first. So the trick to this, and this is what I often see, is people will have a really big ball and they'll place it in and they just start to squish it down. And that's when it starts to get all over the sides and you just have a lot more cleanup to do. So what I recommend is that you make it into a nice round ball. In each of the different bezels, I have different techniques for uh, applying <laughs> the uh, clay in it. Uh, just over time, I've just learned faster ways, like if it was a circle, it has one way, but an oval like this, let me show you. I'll start at the top right here, and if you saw, I made a round ball, but then I kind of made it a little bit elongated, and I will start at the top right up here, and I'm just kind of bringing it up into that top area and pressing down with my thumb, and then I'm going to pull it and push it down towards the other end of the bezel. If I start to pull a little bit too much, I can come back up here, but I'm coming down. And if I get to the end and I have like 
a lot. If I, it depends on the look I want. I'm wanting this to be nice and flush. If I wanted it to be domed, I could do it differently. But right now I'm just wanting it to be flush. So if I get down to this end and I have like a big ball down here, I can easily pinch off some of that excess clay and then continue on. That's one way that um, I have found that makes it a lot easier to apply the clay in to the bezel without having a lot of cleanup on these edges and I can have a nice clean look. So now I'm just going in and seeing if I have any gaps along the edges like right here. You can see I have a little gap or uneven so I can use my fingers to go in and press the clay up into that area. And that's where we let off the last time. You see that little gap down there? I can go in with my thumb and press that clay down into there. So if you have a lot of um, fingerprints or I'm just going in with my thumb and just kind of tapping rapidly to make that nice and flat and flush. But if you do have a lot of fingerprints on there, or if it's not nice and smooth, you can take a wet wipe and just smooth the clay to see how that white, that moisture is just making that nice, nice smooth surface. Then you can go more around on these outside edges and just wipe any of that clay away because uh, it will harden like cement and then it'll be on that side edge. So you can get the idea of how we did that one. Next, let's try, uh, let's try one of these bezels that has more of a pointy edge like this. So I can show you how, how you go about doing that. All right, so I'm gonna pinch off a little ball worth. Roll that into a nice smooth ball. So I'm looking for a ball that doesn't have a lot of creases. It's just easier to uh, put that into the bezel and uh, make it nice and smooth if there's not a lot of creases in the clay to start. So for this, that little point there, I can just start out by kind of flattening that a little bit and shaping it into kind of a point. So I flattened it out a little bit and shaped it into a point. Then it's easier for me just to place it inside of that point area and then start to tap down around it. Do you see how I did that? So I actually injured my thumb recently. <laughs> I was uh, making croutons and sliced my finger, so I'm, it's a little bit of an owie there. So I placed it into that point area, pressed it down, and now I'm doing the same thing I did with that oval, but this time I'm just pushing it up into the bezel with my thumb as I flatten the clay out. And then as I get to this point area, I can press it up that way, press it up that way, until I get that point area nice and filled. Make sure you stop every now and then and make sure that you have all of that clay off your fingertips because that's also easy to get on that side, the outside edges of the bezel. Then you're just cleaning up your fingerprints versus the clay. All right, so once you have it inside of the bezel, and you're checking that, you know, there's not any gaps along these edges and making sure that it's nice and flush and flat. If you have a heck of a time getting inside of these areas, you can take a toothpick and also guide it up inside of there and then go in and press it flat or 
and this area you can take this toothpick and go up and press it up inside of there and then go flat with your fingertip and then taking a wet wipe you make this nice and smooth the clay itself nice and smooth by using the wet wipe and the moisture you can also just get a little bit of water on your finger and roll it on there if you wanted to and then i'm going along that side edge and cleaning up this side edge After about 12 hours, the crystal clay will start to be very hard to the touch, but it'll continue to cure for another 72 hours. And then you will have a fun little bezel like this filled with crystal clay that you can assemble into a fabulous necklace. <laughs>